So, um, Dr. Fauci, according to Forbes, you have an annual salary in 2020 was $434,000. You oversee over $5 billion in federal research grants. As the highest paid employee in the entire federal government, yes or no, would you be willing to submit to Congress and the public a financial disclosure that includes your past and current investments? After all, your colleague, Dr. Walensky, and every member of Congress submits a financial disclosure that includes their investments. I don't understand why you're asking me that question. My financial disclosure is public knowledge and has been so for the last 37 years or so, 35 years well, that the, I've been director. The big tech giants are doing an incredible job of keeping it from being public. Uh, we'll continue to, what, to look for it. Where would we find it? All you have to do is ask for it. <laughs> I, I, you're so misinformed. It's extraordinary. Well, why am, I, why am I misinformed? This is a huge issue. Wouldn't you agree with me that, that you have a you see things before members of Congress would see what? them, so that there's a, an air of appearance that, that maybe some shenanigans are going on. You know, I don't think that's, I assume that that's Senator, not the case. What I assume are you talking it's not about? The case. My, but, my financial disclosures are public knowledge and have been so. You are getting amazingly wrong information. So uh, uh, I, I cannot find them. Our office cannot find them. Where would they be if they're public knowledge? S S Where? It is totally accessible to you if you want it. For the public. Is it accessible to the, to the public? public? Okay. To the public. Great. We look Senator, forward to reviewing it. You are totally it. incorrect. Senator well, we look Marshall, forward to reviewing the, it. Senator Marshall, Dr. Fauci has answered you. It is public information, and he's happy to give it to you if you would ask. Senator Moran. What a moron. Chairwoman, thank you. Um, I, I know this has been talked about. I've watched a bit of the hearing uh, from my office uh, this morning and into this afternoon, but would you highlight for me, I suppose this is for Dr. Woodcock, um, lots of funding, I think adequate funding, certainly knowledge about uh, winter months would bring an increase in cases. What What's the challenge in not being better prepared for access to testing in home uh, and elsewhere? Uh, and how soon will that change? I, I don't think that's, I, I think that's a question for, for uh, um, Assistant Secretary McConnell. Uh, but I would tell you, FDA has approved uh, or authorized over 400 tests or collection systems just for COVID. Uh, we've approved, uh, authorized 15 over-the-counter tests, but it's capacity that we're talking about here, production capacity. So the, there's no, what, what you're telling me, Dr. Woodcock, is there's no problem with the FDA approval of tests. It's the manufacturing process and the supply chain. Um, we could do more with more resources. Um, we have uh, authorized over 2,000 different device products, including the, um, the 400 uh, test-related products in two years. So that's an incredible increase in the workload. And we really appreciate the funding that Congress has provided. However, um, the um, test manufacturers, many of them give us incomplete results. We have to go back and forth with them. The ITAP program that we are doing with NIH for home testing, I think will improve that tremendously. That's a big advance forward. Um, but um, there's also the matter of production capacity with this huge surge and so many more people becoming infected.